Hi and welcome to uh, show 8 of Hot Butter Soul Music Archaeology and hello to anybody who's looking for Harvard Business School. Um, <laughs> come for business knowledge, stay for the music. And uh, yeah, hope everybody enjoyed the first part of the uh, DJ Format interview last week. Uh, this week we got the second part, it's a corker, stay and watch it. Yeah, all round nice guy DJ Format, it was an absolute pleasure having him in here. Uh, doing some trades and doing a bit of digging and uh, generally getting some good knowledge from the man. Yeah. So uh, actually what we're going to do, uh, in homage, and because we've got the second part of the interview, is actually going to play one of the tracks off of his new album. It's a killer, killer album. It's an absolute brilliant album. Yeah. Uh, but obviously we can only play one, and we only play a little bit. So, um, so uh, we picked this one. Yeah. This is a statement in the book of Yeah. yeah, I feel bad actually turning it down when the MC comes in because it's brilliant. It's like a, you know, it's, it's almost like that um, Just Ice going way back, almost like a homage to old school hip hop. Yeah. It's brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Tough drums, wicked scratching from Format. Brilliant, brilliant. So uh, yeah, go and uh, go and buy it because I know that uh, Mr. Format uh, took a lot of time to make this uh, excellent album for you people. So there you go. Yeah, definitely. Right, next up. Next up, we have a, a track called The uh, Attention by The Apples. Picked it up from um, Fat City Records last when week. Decides to kick in. You'll obviously see our uh, notorious head nodding. Yeah. Welchy wah wah guitar there, a little bit of wah wah for my breakfast. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of their stuff's nice. We've got about four albums out. This right. one's on freestyle, uh, but I'm not sure the rest of it's on. But I'm going to pick up a lot more, so we'll be hearing a lot more from the Apples. Yeah. If you check on our Facebook page, you'll see a couple of links to a couple of their videos anyway. So. Yeah, I think we're going to try and have a chat with them when we actually go and see them at the garage. So, uh, you know, anybody out there that likes what they're hearing, go down to the garage in Islington on Upper Street yeah. and check them out. Cool. Nice. Well, around the same time I moved to Brighton, because originally I was from Southampton, so yeah. I moved to Brighton because I was working with a lot of people, you know, I'd, I'd hooked up with First Down, um, I was sort of doing, at the time me and Arrow were, were sort of working on doing a solo album okay. together, um, and then, again, I, it's just, sometimes things just happen, you know, things mm. just fall into place, uh, DJ Heist from First Down, he kind of, you know, lost interest a little bit, um, and, and I became the, the DJ of First Down for a little while and we started doing a lot of stuff together. Um, and, and then I, I kind of, I started to build a bit of momentum, felt more confident with what I was doing and, and started to work on some instrumental b-boy stuff which later became English Lesson and I, mm. I did another track with, uh, with Arrow, Lords of Cardboard that was on another bomb compilation yeah. called Revenge of the b-boy, yeah. uh, also used English Lesson. Um, so I guess it, again, it was just a case of me persevering with with you know the kind of music that I wanted to hear. Sure. You know, I wished I wished other people were making it, and so I just went ahead and kind of did it yeah. myself. So again, it's just a case of just sticking with what I believed and digging for more breaks, just building up my production skills, I guess. Yeah. And uh, and you know along the way you meet people, and you know sometimes that that can make a big difference as well because funnily enough in '98. Mick Blue Eyes again, thanks Mick. Mm. <laughs> he uh, he organised Jurassic Five's first UK tour. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I'm sure this story is well documented. But I was the kind we, of bus we, driver. we want to hear it. We well, hear it. I, I was the I was the bus driver slash tour manager for for their sort of two week tour around the UK. Right. So I was obviously you know driving them around. And they blew up at that time, didn't yeah, they? Absolutely. Yeah. It was it was incredible. It's it brilliant for me personally because I could watch and learn from them. Plus, take up chemistry and Newmark digging all around the UK. You know, places that I hadn't been to before a lot, right. of, a lot of the time. Jeez. Um, so that was really nice, you know. Um, and I think also that it was around that time that I met uh, PS Records 
which were you know the, the label that put out the Jurassic sure. 5 EP and fast forward a few years when I kind of got my act together a little bit more and sort of got a little bit more focused with my music and a bit more direction and met with Abdominal and mm. you know realized that I was working towards an album and that I then approached uh, PS and yeah they signed me and and yeah that, and that, that's how that it's one of those things you know you, yeah. you can you can work hard you can have talent you know you can have all these right ingredients but you've got to have a large slice of luck of course and I, I definitely had more than my fair share of that well, but uh, I mean, uh, you know, I had to look you up on Wikipedia, and uh, but, but, there, but there, there's a, a, there's some glowing reports in regards to sort of like some of the press that was uh, talking yeah. about you when uh, you know your album came out last time and stuff. And I remember yeah. actually watching you know that that excellent video. We know something. Yeah. So so good as well. Yeah. So I mean, Christ, oh, it's amazing. I can't take any credit for it, but it is amazing. It was yeah. Ruben Fleischer that's now quite a big Hollywood. Yeah, director, yeah that's right. Amazingly talented director. Yeah, um, yeah, like totally. Like, but he was just a, a you know a young upcoming uh, enthusiastic you know director that that just had this crazy idea because basically we couldn't get Charlie and our kill to appear in the video because um, you know they were busy either touring or recording it yeah. just wasn't really feasible you know sure. it's nice enough that they did the song with me so it, it just it wasn't possible sure. so yeah somebody had to come up with a plan how do we do a video for a song without the artist being in it. And yeah. I think Ruben basically came up with this idea, and my manager was also involved. You know, certainly speaking with Ruben a lot, and, and you know, to credit the record label, they were definitely involved. It was very little to do with me. Yeah, well, um, but I, I certainly reap the benefits. Well, yeah, so. totally. And there's a couple of other good videos as well. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. Done The one where he's just walking through and yeah. everything seems to be happening and it's yeah yeah, yeah that, that was a vicious battle rap so that again was, that was that was another one by Ruben and the hit song as well yeah that was, that, killer that was yeah, the hit really songs are great for yeah, yeah really yeah. really good I, I've been really lucky with the videos actually because of you know I've, except for this one maybe <laughs> <laughs> in no, a shit the pinnacle. <laughs> I've been touring with the Simon Sound which uh, shamelessly yeah. that's that's my other group the the Simon Sound is Simon James, but it's also myself and Simon do stuff together under the name of Simon Sound. So we we don't really distinguish or make it clear, but both of us are kind of happy with that. Yeah. But um, Simon kind of plays Moog synthesizer and various other vintage sort of synths and electronic equipment. Oh. And for the especially for the live show, what we've done is um, I couldn't bring any of the MCs that worked on my album on tour, so I had to devise a way of you know sort of mm. bringing the the new album to you know. To, to the stage if you like sure um, and yeah myself and Simon put together a show sort of incorporating music from my old albums uh, music from the new album and music from the Simon Sound album right. uh, that we'd made together so we kind of made basically one sort of long mix of of, uh, of all the material I just mentioned sort of cleverly you know doing little alternate versions and you know special yeah. little remixes and edits and leaving sort of gaps in it, so that Simon can play the, you know, the the Moog, and various other electronic sort of percussion and, and, and sort of sound effects, and obviously I'm cutting and scratching, and mm. I even get on the vocoder for a couple of songs, <laughs> so take it back to the, the, to the real electro, yeah. <laughs> to the b-boy electro, yeah. on the vocoder. So, oh, and 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 also an important part of the show is we also um, put visuals together right. that are all completely synced to the music. So if you come to the show. Please enjoy the visuals. In August, I think, is the next time we've got some live shows okay. together, me and Simon, and that's one in Edinburgh, one in Aberdeen. Uh, I think it's the 16th and 17th of August, and then the 18th of August in London, also. Coco. Yeah. That's right, at Coco. Yeah. Also with DJ Vadim and Mr. Thing, nice. so it should be a really fun night, I hope. So Excellent. That might be the last chance people get to see the, uh, the audio visual show. That I'm, you know, that I'm touring with the Simon Sound. So cool. Well, get, get yourselves to the Coco in London if you're around. Excellent. Yeah. Friday the 18th. Nope. Saturday the 18th of July. August. 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 <laughs> oh, I'm good at this, aren't I? <laughs> Hell of a salesman. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well. What's my name again? <laughs> well, thanks for that, Mr. Format. Um, Cheers, Chris. Yeah, Cheers, Brad. Yeah, no let's worries. Play some records. Yeah, let's play some records. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is go into some really quite nice funky soul music. Um, so we're going to play it and then we're going to chat about the artist afterwards. Yeah. Uh, but this tune was actually sampled, I believe, by Black Sheep uh, a long time ago now. But uh, it's a great album and this is a great track, so check it out. <laughs> Ooh. 
with a little love in the shed now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you can get down with the lead here too. But uh, yeah, this is uh, Fuzzy Haskins, um, and the album is uh, a whole nother thing. Uh, I bought this one about 20 years ago in Camden Market. Um, I, I got it for a track on the other side called The Fuzz and the Boog, which is a big breakbeat tune that's been sampled by loads of people over the years. Um, but <laughs> that was a. Uh, <laughs> The love uh, music is bringing in the uh, uh, animals of the night. <laughs> that was a grasshopper that landed on me, sorry. <laughs> anyway, that was a... <laughs> I'm a yeah, let's just have a listen to a bit more of the song, shall we? Bloody thing. There's a spider on the wall behind me as well. <laughs> Anyway, this one's from about 1976 on Westbound Records, um, which obviously was what uh, Funkadelic were on, yeah, and he used to uh, and he used to be in Funkadelic back in the day as well. One so, of one of about 900. One, yeah, one of uh, yeah, one of uh, George Clinton's bitches. But, uh, there you go. So uh, anyway, wicked tune, wicked yeah, tune. Check uh, it out. <laughs> cool. That leads us on to break of the week. Break of the week. Woo! This is actually on a blues album from a, from an English dude as well back in 1967 or something like that. John Mayle. John Mayle, yeah, yeah, who used to uh, who used to uh, record with Eric Clapton and the uh, the Blues Breakers. Um, so uh, yeah, this one is a uh, probably be able to pick it up fairly easily, I would have thought. But uh, anyway, nestled at the end of it, and I don't think many people know about this break. You do uh, now. You do now because here it is, and it's a corker. So this uh, corking little drum and bass break is uh, on this um, Blues from Laurel Canyon on Decca. Um, yeah. The track is... The track is Somebody's Acting Like a Child. Oh, okay. yeah. uh, but killer, killer tune. Uh, so uh, yeah, go and check it out if you can. I think uh, the original uh, is, uh, is fairly rare, about a 40 pound or something like that. But I think there has been re-releases over the years, so you should be able to pick it up and certainly be able to download it, no doubt, anyways. But well, don't do that, you want vinyl. Of course you do, you want to get the real thing. You want to get the real thing. <laughs> Download it or sound worse. And if you're going to get the real thing, get the original on the red unboxed Decca label because that's the one, okay? Anyway, right, moving so that, swiftly yeah, on because really. that's that's it. I mean, I think that's our show you're over and done with. Yeah. Yeah, you poor people, you've, uh, you know, you, we're gone for another week, man. Yeah, thanks to DJ Format again for the second part of his interview. Uh, his new album, Statement of Intent, is out now. Yeah. Buy it, it is brilliant. It As is I said so, last so week, good. it is just a step up in class. It's totally. well, worth a, well worth the purchase. Totally. Uh, Chris, the theme of the week this week is because Chris went to a concert last night. I did. I went to the KPM All Stars concert in uh, Islington Assembly Halls, in Islington, obviously, on Upper Street. Uh, KPM, if you don't know, is a music library. Um, business uh, from the 50s and 60s actually that made all the TV themes and stuff like that. Uh, loads of stuff that you would know but didn't know it was them. Uh, it was a brilliant, brilliant concert and they played this. So as our theme of the week, we're going to play this as, a, as an outro and it's a, it's a brilliant, brilliant tune. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, in homage to Alan Hawkshaw, Brian Bennett, Keith Mansfield, James Clark, Alan Parker and all of those guys um, who are still, who are still funking it up, yeah. funking it up even in their 70s and 80s. And his daughter as well. Alan yeah, yeah, daughter, that's right. Yeah. Kirsty Hawkshaw on vocals. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Cool. See you next week and um, yeah, thanks again to our man Mr. Format. Indeed. Cool. <laughs>